Hello class. Here we're going to look at an example of conservation of energy where we have a non-conservative force, specifically the wind or the air drag. We have a 70 kilogram skier was gliding at 2 meters per second when he started down a 50 millimeter or 50 meter long 10 degree inclined frictionless slope. What is his speed at the bottom if the wind exerts a steady 50 newton retarding force opposite his motion? So we have an initial velocity here of 2 meters per second and we're going down a 50 meter long incline. We're told that it's frictionless so we don't have the force of friction or any work due to friction but we do have a retarding force or non-conservative force due to wind and so we have this force due to the wind acting against us. And it asks for what is the speed at the bottom. So we want the final speed at the bottom of that incline that we're trying to find. Let's look at our free body diagram. We've got here the usual force of gravity acting downward. And we've got a force of the wind acting against us on that incline. Because it says it's retarding opposite his motion. If his motion is down the hill here, so this is the force of the wind or the retarding force that's working against him. This is the force of gravity. And it's frictionless, so I don't need to know anything about the normal force and I don't have to work out those components. I'm going to do this strictly based on the forces that are there and the work done by those forces. I've got an angle of inclination here equal to 10 degrees. And if I moved it up, that means I moved this angle by theta. But that's okay, I actually won't need that one. I will add, however, the other angles. I'm interested in the angles between the forces and the displacement. And so I've got this phi of g, as I'll call it here, and I've got this phi of the wind, I'll subscript w for phi wind, at that location. Let's look at the work due to the wind then. This is going to be fw, the force, times my delta d, and the cos of the angle between that force and displacement. That angle is 180 degrees and so it's working to give me, or it's acting to give me a negative work. I've got a negative Fw delta D. And I'm told that it's 50 newtons and my delta D here is 50 meters. So I have a work here of a negative 2,500 joules. The work due to gravity then is given by the force of gravity, again the delta d, and now the cos of phi g. And phi g is just 90 minus 10 degrees because my incline is 10 degrees. And so I'm left with 5,956 joules. And that's a positive just to emphasize. My total work then is just the sum of those two. So I have a positive 3,000 456 joules. And so it's that total work that then goes into my change in kinetic energy. And so 1 half mvf squared is then equal to my total work plus my initial kinetic energy that I had because it gives me the difference. So I've taken it to the other side and then I can solve for vf squared. So the one of the unique parts is that I'm starting with an initial velocity and I need to account for that. I then have a total work that was 3,456 joules and I'm going to add the kinetic energy that I started with. So I've got two times my work total plus my initial kinetic energy all divided by my mass and when I work that out I shall get shall have a velocity, a final velocity. Take the square root, therefore I have a plus or minus 10.1 meters per second. And so using conservation of energy, it doesn't know anything about a positive or a negative direction. So it doesn't know if I've selected my positive x-axis up the hill or down the hill. And so I get both of these answers out and it's up to me to determine what it is or which direction I am. But Effectively, I'm going down the hill at 10.1 meters per second and depends on how I've defined my positive and negative axes as to which one is the correct answer. In this case, I have a negative x direction is down the hill 
And so it's really the negative 10.1 meters per second that applies in this case. So let's recap. We had a couple of things here. We were dealing with a non-conservative force. That was the work um, done by the force of the wind that was acting up the hill or up the incline. It was retarding or working against his motion. The work due to gravity was the positive work that was pulling us down or pulling the skier down the hill. And the work to the wind was acting against that. So it was a negative 2,500 joules. That left us with 3,456 joules to go into the change in kinetic energy. I additionally started with an initial velocity here, VI equal to 2 meters per second. And so the total work, those 3,456 joules, goes into changing the kinetic energy, therefore changing the velocity. And so I have to account for that initial kinetic energy that was there, and it's the difference then that I'm looking at. So the work total comes on top of that initial kinetic energy and gives me a final kinetic energy, and from that I'm looking at a final velocity of 10 meters per second.